I'm Julie Davy, and I'm a senior neurological physiotherapist in the clinical lead and owner of Connect Neurophysiotherapy. So a neurological physio is someone that deals primarily with individuals with neurological conditions. For example, Parkinson's, MS, strokes, spinal cord injuries, head injuries, for an example. I'm also a qualified Nordic walking instructor and I utilize Nordic walking as both a gait re-education tool and also a way of helping the population I work with to get back outside and exercising and being active. So I'm a qualified Nordic walking instructor under the international body called INWA, the International Nordic Walking Association, but I've also done some training for a few of the other companies and organisations out there that provide you know, Nordic walking and pole walking training. So as a, an expert in neuro rehab and with Nordic walking, and I've written educational courses and online programs about how to train individuals with Parkinson's to correctly and safely walk with Nordic poles to you know, ultimately get the best out of that exercise. I'm often challenged and questioned about what are the different poles used for, what is the difference between Nordic walking and pole walking. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to just go through a little bit more of that information with you. So to hopefully just tie up a few loose ends. So let's start off with pole walking versus Nordic walking. What's what? Because there's quite a few different names out there of what, let's say, Nordic walking is compared to, you know, as I say, pole walking, we've got things like the activated poles, urban poling, um, you know, and say um, all sorts of different names at the top of my head. So I'm just going to take a set of poles here, which are the extra poles, and I'm just changing the feet to make sure that they face the same right way. And just for a quick example, so your classic pole walking is where the arms are often staying by the side, at the elbows at 90 degrees, and we're using the poles opposite arm to leg to kind of support an upright stance, okay? So this is what I would call poling, activate, and um, it's often quite similar to the activate um, you know, walk, and also hiking, you know, this is where we're using the poles to kind of give us balance, okay, and upright. Now we can make this more effortful by striding out. But the main difference is when we're looking at Nordic walking, is Nordic walking is very specific with the poles remaining at 45 degree angle behind you, the poles are in contact with the ground, the elbows are straight, up nice and tall, and we're using the poles more from a push off point of view to generate the movement and ultimately from a from a rehab point of view this is more um, associated with our normal gait pattern because we're keeping that arm in a nice open swing rather than closing it down so you would use the different types of walking to achieve to achieve different outcomes so I'm very particular about utilising the Nordic walking, and obviously I'm not going into this in huge depth, but just so you know the basic distance difference that the Nordic walking is really a prime um, use for gait retraining and really getting um, a real drive out of the posterior muscles of the upper shoulders, the back, down into the leg. So we're creating that push-off element. So it's looking at um, increasing the output of walking. Some nice research has been done to say that Nordic walking starts to be a total body work. Whereas more of our um, conservative walk with the poles here in this position is what I would say is about getting someone who's not particularly active, not particularly balanced, out walking safely. Okay, so we've got two different types of walk. Now what can get very confusing with all of this is um, when we look at the research and I think it's really important to understand that the research around Nordic walking is pretty grey because Nordic walking isn't a protected name or a title so there's a lot of people that will often just call pole walking Nordic walking and as you can see from that demo they're quite different ways of walking you know ones with the poles behind you utilizing the poles from behind and a straight arm compared to a bent arm so when we're looking at the research it is important that 
you know, you do a little bit further digging into that piece of research to see if the claim to that research makes, is it to the type of walking that you are actually talking about? Because there is definitely a bit of a, a crossover where people have said, you know, Nordic walking demonstrates X, Y, Z results, but actually what they're teaching is more of this upright, what I call pole walking, compared to the Nordic walking. So it is important that, um, you know, we have to be careful what we classify as Nordic walking, but as I say, because it's not a protected title, it's tricky. So when it comes to the poles, there's lots of different poles, and what's the right pole or the wrong pole? There isn't a right or wrong, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So I've got here a pair of the Exa Striders, um, which are quite similar to a pair of the Activators, okay, from Urban Polling. And both of them, you'll see, neither of them have a strap. They've got nice big open handles with a ledge, which means there's part of the, um, the base of the hand can sit on them. And they're just a push button release, okay, to change the height. And then they've got these nice big rubber feet on the end. So I'm going to pop the extra strides down. So the joys about the activator poles is that they are a nice comfortable hand grip. We don't have to worry about getting in and out of straps and obviously they're height adjustable. So we can either do a more upright kind of activator walk there or we can do our Nordic walking stroke urban poling with the poles down by our sides. The poles achieve both. Um, I do like these from, as I say, the simplicity and the comfort that they have, but they are not the only ones around. We also have um, more of the traditional Nordic walking pole. XL was a big maker for a while. Um, these aren't XL, but they've got some similarities. That We've got a much narrower handle and we've got a strap. Now, the joys about the strap is that you can get someone in and they can be nice and snug into the strap. It can help support them. Very good if you've got a hand with a poor grip that can't maintain holding the pole. For example, a stroke um, individual or someone with MS who may have a weak hand. So that having these um, poles strapped in helps with that. And the straps then do allow you to progress someone into a bigger push off because they can actually let go of the pole and push back through the whole arm. So you can get very specific We're working on some grip and some release work. So depending on the client's presentation will depend on which pole I would use. There are a couple of people have raised questions with me of late regarding the safety between different populations and the poles. And I can say that there is no evidence to say that a pole with straps is going to cause any more danger or fall than a pole without straps. If you've got someone who is struggling to get their hand into the straps and you have concerns about them getting tangled up with the straps, etc., then you may very well go for the non-strapped pole. But if you've got someone, as I say, who's got a weak hand, who can't hold the pole, or you want to work on the actual grip release, which is very nice for our Parkinson's, where they've got very um, you know, small hands and a loss of movement, so you can really work on that release, then I would recommend using the straps. When I do my training for Nordic walking of my clients, and I often get them to walk with a range of poles so that they can try which one really works for them and where we may take their rehab. So I'm hoping that just covers a few kind of questions and bits and pieces. So just to summarise is that there is a difference between upright pole walking, okay, compared to Nordic walking. We have to be careful about the, the use of research and what different research is claiming because um, people can say that Nordic walking is um, you know, improving certain health aspects and outcomes, but you may be teaching a different style of walking to what that actual research project was. So I think we do have to be careful of that. There is different poles and I feel that you should really evaluate the, the client, the patient who is using the poles to find out what is going to be best for them. 
I believe there is no increase of danger or risk or falls or injury between a strapped pole and a non-strapped pole as long as you've done your risk assessment. So there isn't a condition that I would say don't use the straps of these people or that because you may find that the straps can be really useful and you know to so keep that range available.